very much. What I'd like to cover in this uh, <coughs> presentation are several areas in automotive manufacturing. I got involved in this effort in the same month, January last year, when the issue then was how do you get a new government to take a look, a serious look, at a sector that industry at firms that have been around for quite a time and who wanted a bold new move that perhaps only them understood what is it that they wanted to do. But it's a new government and so fresh uh, points of view will have to be brought out. And so within the University of Asia in the Pacific, there is a research effort on manufacturing which I was asked to form part of, to which I agreed. First is that in manufacturing, in, 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 in auto industry, first what we wanted to do is, well, how do we understand the automotive industry, the extent of importance of the economy, the challenges for future growth, and certain blueprint for manufacturing. The auto report was addressed not so much for you, not so much for me, not so much for the industry, but the government. So that the true partnership and the administration has professed on Barton, which is public-private partnership, can come out. And I felt that to be able to be ambitious as far as the sector and tap the opportunities, the big opportunities of working with the auto industry, there was a need to put together few items that we felt at that time, from an academic standpoint, government should be convinced about and hopefully sit down with the industry so that they could craft eventually what the industry calls and what the government now has publicly said, a roadmap for development. First, at the time, we said there's positive growth in automotive sales. The highest vehicle sales for 2010 grew by 27%. And that is the highest growth that the industry has or the market has experienced in the last 10 years. However, if you break it down, there is still a growth that the locally manufactured vehicles, such as their shares to total sales, have decreased from 55% in 2006 to only 44% in 2010. <laughs> and there was a significant growth from completely built up units. So the research focused on the manufacturing side of what is the total automotive industry. We did not intend to cover anything and everything because it is a very big industry. Second is that the feature is it has a strong parts of manufacturing components manufacturing. And big in the sense that um, they originate mostly from parts and components manufacturers in eco zones. However, the growth of parts and components manufacturers outside the eco zones were dependent on the scale of locally manufactured vehicles and that replacement right there. Let me say a little about the extent of the importance of the economy. You and I, when we go to work, when we take recreation, it's inevitable that we take a vehicle in whatever form it is whether it's a two-wheeler, self pedal or a huge string of aircraft, buses, trucks. But nevertheless, these are vehicles. They move people, goods, from one point to another. They directly and indirectly employ around 410,000 workers. That includes allied and supporting industries. Now, that's a lot of jobs. If I were to compare, it took us more than 10 years to be able to get that kind of figure in an industry called distance processing and sourcing. It has a significant share in value of output and in value adding in the manufacturing sector. Value adding is value that is created domestically within the inventory. Third, it has the fourth highest output multiplier effect 
What this simply means, and this is a term of the economist, is that in the Philippine context, a one peso investment in automotive manufacturing, whatever it is, whether it's in the beginning or later stage of automotive manufacturing, generates almost four pesos worth of additional output. That is something that is empirically, statistically, and historically proven. And it has extensive linkages to significant industries. Meaning to say, the vehicle, and the manufactured vehicle, has machinery inside, electrical machinery. It has metals. It involves wholesale and retailing, trade. There is rubber. There's glass, <coughs> chemicals, petroleum not to mention financing, or banking, repair, and many others. Challenges for future growth. This is a portion that says, okay, so how do you get the policy maker of government to seriously consider industry? The future is not defined. Nobody knows what the future is going to bring. But as long as there are people, who need to move from places to places, and goods to move from place to place, transport vehicles are important. On land, it is called motor vehicle. First, domestic market limitations. If you compare ASEAN, of which we are now a part of, there is slower growth compared to other ASEAN markets. Second, weak supply chain. Not that the parts makers and assemblers are weak. It is the flow that I'm referring to. For the parts and components makers composed mainly of SMEs serving as second and third tier subcontractors. The large parts and components firms in Ecozones have potential linkages with local suppliers. That still has a great potential that needs to be explored. It is also said that there is uncompetitive price. Those who can afford probably will not complain so much. But the moment you put it on a regional and a global scale, then the issue becomes very much alive. First, automotive manufacturing lacks economies of scale. That is the assembly and the parts making within the current capacity. So that will be elaborated later on. There's a high percentage of imported and local raw material content. It does not mean that we're after the reverse. No. And high assembly costs, for which the manufacturers themselves would advance the reasons of why. But these are things that we feel from an academic, analytical, or consulting standpoint, not with interest, not in manufacturing, these are the things we want government to look at in a very, very serious way. And there's a complicated enforcement of rules and regulations. Definitely, enforcement is the task of government. That's what public service is all about. There is smuggling of new and second-hand vehicles that are not qualified to enter. So I'm not saying because it is second-hand, because it is new, there is smuggling. No. All I'm saying here is that there is lack of enforcement on what is legitimate entry of vehicles and this allowed of legitimate entry of vehicles. We're saying this allowed because in academia we feel that government with the present uh, leadership, the present, you know, there is a